Welcome back, pen friends. This is Tom with Gold Spot Pens, and I'm joined here with my guest Roy from the Pen Boy Roy YouTube channel. And today we're here to discuss uh, some pens that we were, you know, brought from our own personal collections. And green versus to, blue. Yeah, green versus blue. Want to take a look at your pens first? Or? Sure, we'll yeah. take a look at the the better ones first. I have 15 pens, all of which are green. Uh, one of them is allegedly green, and that's going to be the spec uh, Tatcha Spectrum. This is not a green pen. I don't care what everybody tells me. This is a fantastic pen. This is uh, this one is one of my my favorite favorites. It's a steel nib. I actually prefer the steel nibs over the gold nibs. So I'm sitting there with all these nib units that are made of 14 karat gold mm -hmm. or 18 karat gold rather, and I prefer the steel ones. I just like the writing experience. Another pen that I'm really liking a lot is this pen here. This is a uh, Monteverde Prima Green. I really like this. The, the acrylic is also hand turned. You're talking about the quality level comparable to something of a Conklin Duragraph in that range. This one just seems a little bit less vintage. It looks more sleek and modern mm -hmm. for as much as a pen like this can look sleek and modern. I really like it. These nibs, they're smooth, they have feedback, you know, they're, they're nice. And they're very springy, even for steel nib, because like, look at the line variation that I'm getting. When it comes to these two pens, you got two acrylic pens. You got the Le bon Celebration in green, and you have the Conklin Duragraph in whatever green they call it. It's flaked, this one mm -hmm. pearlized. I like this one a lot better. I would always choose the Le bon over the Conklin. The Le bon is like six bucks more, mm -hmm. and it's just not a bad price for a pen. The quality of how it's made is also very good. Like the, the threads are very smooth. This one I gotta brag about. Mm -hmm. This one is, you recognize the body style in it? Right? Yeah. It's the Edison Beaumont. This, this one is in a pearlized green. It's a custom pen from Edison Pens. Now this one's not available at any retailer. You can only get them direct from Edison, but this is an extra fine stainless steel nib and you know, it was tuned by uh, Brian Gray himself, because I, I requested him do it. Because I, like, uh, I like feedback, I like uh, you know resistance right. on fountain pens. This is one, uh, a regular series, production series Beaumont, I think the price went up, so it's 169. Right, right? So right. if somebody called and wanted to buy a Bedrock Flake, or the blue one, or the red one, or the, the white and gray one, it's 169. This bad boy is 275, and the reason why it's 275 is because I can customize it. You can say any material that you want to, any type of nib configuration, as right. far as like cursive italic. This uh, this bad boy is the Opus Picnic. This is an interesting pen. It's an eyedropper pen, and uh, I think it was like inspired by like the Japanese, the old Japanese vintage Japanese yeah, eyedroppers. Yeah, vintage Japanese eyedroppers. It has a lot of ink. It has a number five Yovo stainless steel nib. Branded Opus 88. What's cool is you got O-rings all Everywhere. over the place. Like you could build a boat. If Tom Hanks had this pen on Castaway, he wouldn't have had an issue. He would have been back before he grew a beard. Uh. This thing isn't gonna leak on you. You mentioned earlier uh, the uh, 3776. Now this is not the standard 3776. This is another one of my favorites. I love this pen. It's a fine nib. It's not the soft one. Um, it's just the 14 karat. And it looks very vintage. I mean, you have like you have the sailor vintage. Uh, That's like the doppelganger. Or yeah, like it looks it looks very similar. How old is the sailor? This one's 1996. It's yeah. the Jade Emerald or Magellan or some weird name. They don't make it anymore. It's a, I think it's a slim, uh, not slim, uh, standard 1911. Mm -hmm. Right now, this one is also good. This is an Edison Menlo with a extra fine steel nib. It has a large ink capacity. It's a draw filler. Now my hands are slippery because it's really hot in here. Um, what I did is uh, I asked uh, Brian Gray to add a spring, so that way I don't have to punch down and pull up, punch down and pull up like the standard draw filler, but you can just push it down and let go, it comes up and it fills. Finally, we have the Franklin Kristoff Itirum with a 14 karat stub italic gradient nib. Yeah, that's a nice pen. It's nice, it's green, I like it. It's green. Yeah. A lot of pens are green. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's got a little bit of translucency through the. Uh, yeah, the a little account. bit, not as much as I would like. So we're gonna move on from my fabulous green pens, and we're gonna move on to the blue pens that he brought. This is the Van Gogh in the portrait blue. It's a 
it's a faceted fit, you know, faceted barrel, faceted cap. Uh, so it's got 18 different sides, I believe. The um, nib on it is stainless steel, and I just kind of smoothed it out and adjusted the flow a little bit so that I could get it to write a little bit wetter. But um, it's got the magnetic uh, cap mechanism. I got this for my uh, when my son was born. And I put the the my pen system and I put his initials on top. Oh, look at that! I've so, never actually seen a my pen system. Uh, yeah. uh, this is a, kind of like a little known fact, but that's something that we have here. We have the whole entire uh, set of initials in really? both uh, in both the gold and the silver. Oh, know? I like the uh, I like the end. It's a little different than your uh, Rembrandt's. Yeah, I like that. This one's a Herald. It's an older Herald. So the newer ones that are the production mile have a bit more of a flare on the um, on the grip section here. Uh, but this one's a little bit older model that does not have as much of a, you know, kind of like a flare out towards the end here. It has like a nice um, swirl, a little bit of chatoyance involved, and kind of reminds me of like some, some blue, you know, ocean waters and, you know, the Caribbean and whatnot. But this has got the um, stainless steel Yovo nib on it. Everything's engineered to, you know, certain tolerances, and, and Brian's very particular. And that's, that's something that I think he's always built his, um, his products on, it's just that, uh, that sensitivity to uh, to perfection in terms of like you know how the cap should thread, how the the pen should be able to write. This is a limited edition uh, Ogiva cocktail in the Blue Angel. There's like hardly anything I don't like about this pen, and what I didn't like about it, I was able to correct it, um, it. Which was actually the piston mechanism, which I know that it was a complaint with a lot of people, was that it was very sticky, like when you were trying to actuating the, the piston inside. I took out the nib and feed, and then I took a, um, I took like a little bit of silicone grease, and I just greased the inside oh, of the, okay. so 100% uh, pure silicone grease, and then I ran the piston up and down, and that has helped tremendously. This is a nice writer. Yeah, and that's the 14 karat uh, extra flexibile. So you have also too, it's not a pen that we carry anymore, but I still carry it around. Uh, Nemosine or Nemosine, however you prefer to pronounce Nemo, it. Nemosine. Nemosine, it's actually um, named after the, uh, the Greek goddess of memory. But yeah, this is like another one that I like to throw different oh, inks like, at I because like I'm not really concerned about like if I, you know, let's say with a piston fill or something like that, I'm not really concerned if I throw like a, a more, you know, crazy wackadoo type of ink in there. Mm -hmm. Next blue pen is another inexpensive one. This is the um, Pilot Parallel. Ooh, look at that. And what I did with it was um, I changed the nib on it. That to, is interesting. Uh, to craft it into like a kind of like a knife-like nib and the reason behind that is the is to make it kind of like a folded nib. Because so I see a lot of people using folded nib, and folded nibs, you have to dip all the time to get that, you know, to, to yeah, it's not a self-filling type of pen. Explain to me what a folded nib is. A folded nib, it looks like, it's exactly like this, but like, what essentially it does, it's kind of like this. Mm-hmm. Which, Wh which end being like, the tip that you write on? This is, this would be the end. Oh, I so, see. So this, so this would be like your handle, mm -hmm. and then this would be your, your edge with it. And uh, what I wanted to replicate was like kind of that oh. curve because this this curve that's right here, depending upon how it's hitting the paper, kind of creates a um, uh, a really rough hewn sort of edge on the on the page. It's more for um, creating like a, a lettering style that's more grungy mm -hmm. and and a little bit more rough. That's all for my blue pens. But we could go through the other pens that I have. Um, this is the the Sailor Rialo. Rialo. It's a convertible architect nib too. Is this supposed to flex at all? Uh, not so much, no. Mm -hmm. It's like watching a five-year-old trying to write for the first time. So you're like, sideways. Well, yeah, I'm sideways, but that's the whole thing is that what people get all crazy about, they love like, oh, so I, I want to get mine like done in an architect oh, nib. Wow, you just, wow. just write just write 90 degrees from the- But like this, you know, sideways. Yeah, exactly. So, so normally the down stroke would be thick. Right. Side stroke would be thin. Yeah. Right? So if you, ah, look at that. Now I appreciate you guys tuning in and definitely check out Penboy Roy's channel for more awesome videos and reviews and other sorts of you know fun things that he puts together. If you have any questions about any of the pens, you could always email me directly at Tom at goldspot.com or also uh, leave a comment uh, below and uh, let us know how we're doing. Let us know you know you want to see Roy's beautiful face on on more of our videos or. Um, if you want to see more awesome pens that we've got, you know, anything specific that you'd like to take a look at, that would be awesome. I did have a really good time. Thank you again, Tom, for having me come down. Thank you, it's Roy. always fun. It's, uh, it's a nice long drive. 
Thanks. Sounds good. All be right. well, be safe. Thanks, guys. Take care. Stay inky. Oh, stay inky? oh, sorry. Say stay, inky? stay inky, my friends. Oh my god, you almost just screwed the whole thing up. We couldn't <laughs> publish this.